Dear people, I would like to welcome you on this Friday evening. We're happy that you're here and that you're interested in this citizens' participation. This is quite new for us. Even though we have to say that we do have a lot of citizens who are in our consulting um, committee, which in 2017, when we took charge, we decided that we wanted to really give value to this commission. But um, this participation goes a little bit further because it's about a specific project. And the project is the redesign of the Schockweiler farm, where there are many different possibilities and ideas of what could happen to this farm. When we bought it, we said that maybe we could do make it into social housing because this receives high subsidies. We said, well, we could do different things with the farm building and with the old barn. One idea was to have a museum because the museum culture is quite alive in Luxembourg. And Uh, we've had quite a lot of interesting ideas from Mark, and I want to say a big thank you for that. But then we decided to say, let's see what people think. And then there is a group like Réseau, for example, who do this kind of citizen participations. And we decided to um, do this project with them. So you might remember the first information meeting we had. We had 32 people here and 283 um, people joined us over live stream and the Apart TV. On the digital platform, we have 196 people and we had uh, over, I think it's 151 answers on our survey which have been analyzed, and you will know about the results tonight. These numbers that I've just told you show that this citizen participation is an interesting way to go about looking at new projects. The results of this phase of the survey um, will be detailed today and here in the room we do have some posters up which you can look at. Before we, from next week on, we will go into in the interactive phase and the first workshops. And uh, a number of people have already registered for these. But in my short introduction, I wanted to make sure to thank you for your participation and your interest. And now I'll pass the word to Gary Didrich, who will give you the results of the survey. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. This cooperation together with Mark Biesen and being able to do this process of citizen participation with you, we, there was 151 people who answered the survey, but we also had focus groups here in the room where we could go a little bit more in depth. It's important to know that this survey and the focal groups were done so that the usage which will be developed by uh, the people can have relate to the actual place. The idea was that people can work creatively 
And the idea is that all these ideas can be taken into account to the usage of the Schokweiler farm. So that the end usage can go a step towards taking into account the ideas and the living situation of the citizens. So we've looked at the needs of the residents of the commune of Kaelin. The agenda for tonight, I will, be, I will quickly tell you the basic information of who um, answered the survey. And then we'll look at the most important results of the survey. I mean, it's a 20-page report, but we'll go into the main headlines. And the report will be published online as well. But we're looking into the main results tonight. We'll they're, they've been divided on the different posters. And like I said, we'll discuss, uh, go into detail, and any questions that may arise. And then we will talk a little bit about the results themselves. How can these be interpreted? And we also want you to participate in this interpretation of the results. Mm, so that we know what do these mean for the future usage of the farm. And then it will continue with the workshops um, as of next week. So the first thing we ask is who participated? Well, it was 151 citizens. 51% of the respondents were female, 49 were male, 73% of people, 73% um, uh, were people who are actually at work at the moment, uh, employees, 22% were pensioners, and 5% were young people up to 27 years of age. Of these, divided in nationalities, Three quarters of the people responding were Luxembourgish, 83%, and then the other two um, majorities or the other two important nationalities were the French and the Belgian nationality. These were the two other large groups. Of the people who participated, 81% of respondents have lived in Luxembourg for more than 20 years. 23% of the non-Luxembourgish um, respondents have lived in Luxembourg for more than 20% and only 11% of people uh, responding have lived less than 11 years in Luxembourg and 35% of the non-Luxembourgish uh, respondents have um, spent less than 11 years living in Luxembourg. So the majority of people know Luxembourg quite well. Those are the most So we'd, we'd like to invite you now to look at the posters that are up. And we are here with you so that if there is any questions, we can explain what they mean. If you have precise questions about things that aren't on the posters, then you can also ask these and I will um, answer them. I have the report here with me. So I would invite you now to get up and stroll to the different posters. I think some of you might have already looked. If there are things that you want to discuss about. Here on the left, you have the posters of who participated and what are the impressions of life in the commune? Then you have the poster about the services of the commune. And then we have the other posters specifically about the Schockweiler farm.
maybe a few questions that I've been posed, which might be interesting for everyone, is of all these participants, these 151 people, how many of these people were from Nospold? That was one of the questions. And well, it was two thirds of participants were people who live in Nospold, which is normal because uh, we put the questionnaire of the survey in all the Nospold um, households through the mailbox. Um, of course, other people could participate also, but in Nospold, everybody got the um, survey in their mailbox. And we can tell this in the result. And of the people in Nospold, the majority, 80-85% of people, um, were people who actually grew up here or have always lived here. Then we had the question about the workshops, how this is going to be done. Normally, everyone who is registered in the platform, so in uh, participationkelen.lu, and it's also been published in the um, communal newsletter and on the internet, everybody who Everyone can register here and next Saturday we'll have the first group of the first tour, the first phase. And the same workshop will happen again one week later. So you don't have to come uh, the two consecutive Saturdays, but one of the two. And then there will be the third Saturday and that's where the two groups, the people who want to continue with the second phase, uh, and those two groups will then come together and the results will be brought together. And these workshops are really very hands-on. The idea is to come up with very concrete um, ideas how the usage would be of the farm, who would use it, there would be uh, prototypes um, made. Uh, the idea is that uh, we come up with ideas of how what the feeling would be like if you used the chocolate half and how it would be managed. So it would, uh, we would go really into detail there. It's, it's quite creative. It's not just discussing. Um, we might use Lego to build something to come up with prototypes. I would like to just um, guide you through a few of the slides here because there might be you've been able to look at things now and, and so now if you do have questions then please don't hesitate to ask them while we go through these uh, ideally through the mic so that everybody uh, can uh, hear your questions too okay so the feeling of belonging sense of belonging of the participants was one of the things that we asked. And we found that 88% of people really feel that they belong to the commune. We've put this in a link uh, and saw that this is because 70% of the people um, actively participate uh, in the commune through some activity and 43% of them have social contact with other citizens. And then of course there's the people who grew up here and also, because of that, have a sense of belonging. But these are two aspects that we found, that even people who don't, who haven't lived here so long, still have a real sense of belonging to the commune of Kielen. Then the commune, in the eyes of 44%, so most of the per per uh, per uh, participants, is seen as a calm, a place and a place to recharge energy. 32% say that the development of the um, education of children was important and 33, 30% said that it's a place where you know each other, where people know each other. And then we def divided into the different profiles what the commune should be. So, 44% uh, say that they, it should be a calm place, and then 41% of people who are working at the moment look for interaction. 58% um, 
uh, of people, and these were the pension the retirees saying that traditions are important. And with the young people uh, under 27, they, they talked about the dynamic and that there should be activities and things happening. The challenges in these same profiles, which are the challenges for the future? The employees say it should be a calm place, even in the future. And for the retired people, the traditions and also the cultural heritage are important. Then for the young people, um, the commitment um, of citizens was important. Everybody had Everybody had the same um, possibilities uh, to answer. So the young, young people could also have said that tradition was important. These weren't open questions. People didn't just write something, but it was a multiple choice where people had to choose things that were important to them. In, in the survey, there was a maximum of two um, choices that uh, people could, uh, could click on. People had to make a choice. You could make two choices between these possibilities. The commune, the services of the commune with which the participants are mostly um, satisfied. Nature, that's 85%. Uh, it's a service in the sense, it's not so much a service of the commune, but it's something that people really um, appreciate. Then 80% would be the medical services, 76% sports, and 76% events. And then when we look into the different profiles, where people were not so happy um, with the employees, what people weren't happy with, people who work at the moment, is 46% would be mobility, mobility no, in all its aspects. And then conviviality, 46% people would uh, like to have more opportunities. And then 38% of jobs, the possibility to have a job in the commune. Is there a question? With the retirees, um, mobility is also an issue. 48% um, said that they are not so happy with this. And then housing, 48% um, spoke about housing and 45% said integration could be improved. With young people, its conviviality was very important for 74% of people, doing things together, um, then jobs, 60%, and then a free uh, time or entertainment and culture, 62%, were important points that could be improved. Then specifically to the farm of Schockweiler, it should be a place where what should happen was the question. And most people say it should be a creative, but also um, a, a place be where things can be done. 41% um, of people said it should be a place to meet also, and 38% of people said it should be a convivial place. So there is a wish to have a place where you can do sports and creative things, but specifically really a place where people should meet. And 59% uh, of people say that it should um, be used for different um, activities um, or different usages, but that it would be important that it should also to do with um, doing activity with activities with children. Um, where where people could give more detail, we got answers saying that it would be interesting if there could be intergenerational activities, so older people, but also young people and children. 
And the last slide, um, the participation of the citizens. This is, of course, a, a process of citizen participation. And the question was, how do you perceive this? And it showed that 59% of participants find this important. And of these, 62% were um, Luxembourgish. 97% uh, were um, retired um, people, and 56% of the citizens who do not feel, do not so much have a sense of belonging to the commune. So they were maybe hoping to develop more of a sense of belonging through where, where they don't have so much contact with people around them in the commune. So it showed that this can be a way, uh, this participation can be a way for people to feel that this speaks to them. And the participants would wish uh, different levels of participating. 25% would like to um, actually take care in the co-construction um, at the farm. 23% would like to be asked and be part of the discussions um, together with the people of the commune, the administrative and technical staff. And then 17% could actually imagine um, to be part of a co-management of this project and to be part of the, the, the daily running of the project at the farm so that it wouldn't be um, a project just from the commune or just run by the commune but where people would actively participate in its management. So these are the slides that you've already seen. Now this is the moment to, to share um, you've made some observations and we can talk about this now. It would be interesting. It's interesting for the commune to hear your ideas and your observations and also for us um, so that when we prepare the workshops that we can take into consideration any opinions or ideas that you have at the moment. I would like to relative something. I think it's really great what you've done. It's really, really positive. But the question that you also left just one choice or just two choices, it makes that the percentages might be a little bit warped because people might actually agree with um, other uh, things that they couldn't click on. So there's a small bias in the survey, but I do think overall that it's very, very positive. Yes, of course, when we want to know the tendencies, then we do have to limit the choices a bit, but that doesn't mean that everybody, of course, that means that everybody couldn't give all the answers, that's right. Any more observations or questions? I suppose that in the workshops this will be much more concrete because this was quite general. Yes, in the workshops we'll really go into detail. Uh, we try to first look at what we've got, have a baseline, and then to see which tendencies there are and which um, groups we have in the population that have come up and, and uh, come up with input to then take this input. There was a lot of enthusiasm um, in people to come up with great ideas concretely, specifically for the farm already. But if we did that before doing this other phase, then we don't know whether the projects will actually um, be um, working towards the needs and the wants of the commune. You might have a group of very enthusiastic people who come up with one project, um, but then we don't know whether that project speaks to the needs of many of the um, uh, commune workshops. 
Um, is it possible to only come to the third workshop and if you can't come to the second? It's not ideal, but, but you can still participate. If, if only some people come to the second workshop, then they can maybe give some uh, feedback of what has been done before. It's important in this design thinking that the things that you develop also get tested, also with people who haven't been working on it, so it is possible. So what were some of the concrete ideas that you got um, from people to have an idea? Well, linked with this usage, uh, with the meeting together and have a convivial place and creative and restful place, there was a tendency in small groups uh, where people could write freely. It goes towards very different uh, a, pl a place where very different things could happen, activities such as some people would like to read, uh, older people who would like to read for children, have readings for children, um, games, sport games, but also new sports, new forms of sports for which there aren't associations yet, and where people maybe want to experiment them. Maybe in maybe a part of the farm could or the a part of the barn could be reserved for that, and then um, but different activities like yoga lessons. Um, people who live in the commune and who already have these activities and could maybe do them here in the commune, and the idea would be that families could come together with their children and that the children play while maybe uh, there is some kind of um, gastronomic section, so maybe a bar or a bistro where you could eat or drink. And one idea that came up which could be interesting with the intergenerational side is that now with a home office that not everybody wants to work from home, but not everybody wants to drive to town, that maybe it would be interesting to have uh, like a co-working type um, area where people could bring their own laptop and work, uh, where other people who aren't working can do their other activities in, in the same place. So that the different life realities would meet in this space. Something that kept coming back is that locally you can buy things from a farm. This farm sells you mm, uh, one product and another farm sells you another product and then maybe it would be interesting to bring these different products together. Um, so a farm shop uh, with produce of the different farms. But then, of course, there are uh, practical questions that have to be asked to see whether, for example, the farmers would be interested to do this. And there is many concrete questions that we have to look at. But it really goes into the direction of a space where citizen can, citizens can propose activities to other citizens. And To a specific degree, this project is also in a wider context with shared space and a house across the road. So are we talking only about the Schockweiler farm or are we um, also looking at to the other projects to avoid that there might be um, uh, some similarities in the projects? The project is for the Schockweiler farm, but we've said from the beginning that this is or should be part of, um, of a wider thing, and that's why on the plan we also have the other house. Um, 
and the slides and the plan is supposed to be here for the workshops too. The idea is that the workshops um, are really designed by the users or we go into the position of the users and so if for if for the users uh, it makes sense to maybe include um, this other area then in the workshops we can we can go that way of course the workshops aren't going to um, take a final decision on what's going to happen to the farm this will but it's important to keep in mind what you've just said and, and make sure that what's being done in front of the door uh, also makes sense for the other project. I have another question. Participation. What was the youngest uh, age or what was the youngest uh, um, person who answered the survey? Well, I'll have to look. I think it was from 16 years old um, people uh, could answer the survey, but I'll, I'll have to check it in the main report. Maybe I'll take the other questions. I was wondering if you already know something about the resources that are available for this project, the financial resources, because depending on what you want to do, there might have to be constructions or you might need um, educators or social workers or uh, uh, somebody who who works there full time. So, But if we know that we don't have the resources for that, then maybe there uh, isn't much point to think in a particular way. I can't tell you that today. But I know we bought it for two million and the idea, first we had the idea to have uh, social housing there because it gets um, subsidies. And But uh, the commune of Kielin is already doing quite a lot in that area. And as far as I know, we have four and a half a million in the budget for the whole project. Just the just the building or also the shared space? No. Only the farm. So only the farm. Four and a half million. I want to ask, these meetings in the small groups, will there be an architect present who will see whether... Because it's very good to have ideas, but then um, maybe if um, ideas come up that cannot happen. Yes, we do have an architect and it's someone there will be an architect available in the workshop uh, so that if there is ideas, for example, to uh, move some of the actual structures change the structures of the um, building then she will be able to say something about it. Of course, the architect doesn't have all the technical details with her when she's present, um, but she will be able to say whether things will be um, uh, more or less feasible. And we do get a plan from the service technique where the zones are clearly defined because uh, one part of the area is a green area, Zone Vert, uh, classified. And another zone is a bad zone, which is maybe more flexible than if it was classified in another way. So, so in the different zones, there is different things that are possible. And uh, of course, uh, in some zones, you can't uh, build a lot of new buildings. And but this um, data, this data, we will have it at the workshops. I had given an idea. I was thinking more in the direction of healthy food and more 
movement. For me, it was an idea to have a place uh, with a kitchen where during the holidays um, you could cook with young people because we do have a lot of young families who don't cook so much at home. The, the cooking in the family at home is something that is um, disappearing. So to have a nice garden with herbs and some motoric uh, plays, like a playground with motoric skills to do with movement. That could also be something for older people. I think it's important that more generations can do something um, there. And we could maybe have international cooking courses. We could have special cooking courses for men. And um, and we'd have healthy food. We have so many farms who produce um, uh, nice product. Why don't we work with them? We don't have a kitchen in the commune where we can do uh, cooking workshops. And the the canteen that we have, the canteen that we have is from the school in Mama. They have a pedagogical kitchen where they regularly go with the primary schools, and I think. That would be an interesting thing to have because in the families there's not that much time for this anymore. Yes, that kind of goes in the direction where we were saying that it would be good to have workshops, but then of course um, it's it's for the workshops to see if this is something that could happen and where in the farm. But of course, eating is probably the most convivial thing uh, we have. Yes, and I think that all generations um, uh, would eat. So, And then, of course, the local products. There's a lot of synergies between the ideas that came. Do we know something about Site et Monument? So whether the um, building is classified, it will be classified, it isn't yet. So we know it's not possible to say. I mean, the exterior definitely has to be um, kept um, as is. But we made sure to buy it also so that it wouldn't get torn down. But inside, maybe, if the question was if maybe inside you knew whether things could be changed or not. Could you go back to the picture before? Can you stop there? There. <laughs> so the white house on the building, this was the Shockweller house. And, and the house we're talking about today is the newer house. And the White House, I'm wondering what City Monument would say about this. In my opinion, it would be important to look at all documents to see what to do with the White House in the picture. So it would be important for experts to look at it. We have Mr. Kandel. He would um, be happy to give a small presentations with plans and documents during the workshops. And we hope that the plans of this house would be part of it.
It's important to look at the surroundings also. And it's important that we consider the impact on mobility. How do we organize the traffic if something happens here? I'm sorry if we don't have people speaking in a microphone and we don't hear so well. So as the other person said, and it's an important part of NOSPOLT, and we have to develop a dynamic, and we have to make sure that we consider the traffic uh, and that traffic doesn't become a hindrance. Because here in Nospold, and not just here in Nospold, we really have to think about the concept of traffic. Us, the Greens, we think that here in Nospold, it would be important to do to have a bus stop close by and um, to see which cars we can manage to keep away from there through parking or otherwise. So there is a concept missing in this survey that we got, uh, the questionnaire, the possibilities that we had to, the questions that we were asked didn't go into this, the traffic problem. And for me, it's important that we look at this project in the context of the traffic. Well, it was said, uh, Brasserie, we do have restaurants in the, um, we already have restaurants in Kielin and we want to make sure that we don't cause um, them harm with this project and we do have to make sure to consider the traffic issue. Well, of course, there is a cafe right next door and this was a point of discussion that we don't want to um, uh, hinder them by so that one possibility is that there would only be a kitchen for events um, but not put uh, maybe not put another um, commerce in there a commercial I also wanted to say that if a kitchen was put in there, it, it would be great if the associations of Nospold would be able to use that. And if there was a, a garden with herbs, it would be good for local associations to use that for their events. It shouldn't just be there for cooking, not just for cooking courses, but of course it should be at the service of the local associations for their events. Is there any more questions, maybe about the results or the process? I have a question. The workshops that we had in the summer, how were people chosen to participate and what are the results of these? These people were chosen um, by chance through probability. We had a group with just people from Nospult and we wrote 50 of we wrote to 50 of those, and I think five people registered, and only three people came of the people who were born and grew up in Nospold. And then we wrote to young people, and unfortunately, we weren't able to get a group um, together. We tried with the youth house as well, but unfortunately, there. And then we had a group of non Luxembourgish people who've lived here for less than five years, and we wrote twice um, to that group, and then we, by chance, would pick people. 
And then we had we wrote to um, the whole commune, but people who would not be from Nosbult. And there we got, I think it was five people together. And the results were in 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 part are the ideas that um, I gave when the question came up with the concrete ideas. Uh, what's important with the citizen participation, uh, what it means to have a calm a commune and a place to tank up energy. So we were able to ask more in detail, how do you imagine that? And We have the report of the questionnaire, which will be published on the website. And the workshops um, that we will have now, we will uh, put as input the things that came out of the other workshops. Do you think that the, the fact that people uh, didn't um, participate is because it was in the summer? But if you used probability and took uh, people from <laughs> the, the commune as a whole and not into these small groups, maybe you would get more people to come. Well, the fact that it was Friday evening probably didn't help and in we did some at the beginning of the summer so we we did another one uh, towards the end of the summer so but it's a question of timing we could only do these workshops once we had the answers of the questionnaire so that we knew what we wanted to ask then but we wanted to make sure to do the workshops and, uh, and do the focal groups before the workshop. So what we talked about is that with the young people, we will, because they really didn't answer the questionnaire either, um, we want to target them again and try and get a group together uh, and hopefully make sure that they will be there in the workshops, but that within the month of November, we try and establish a group of young people to get their input. <coughs> the only thing that I'm thinking about now as well is that we make sure that people in wheelchairs will um, have access to whatever project we do, and I think that's important in our commune. Yes, I think that's, um, I think that's part it's almost compulsory in these type of projects nowadays. If there isn't any more questions, we have Chef Baum who's here, who supports a group of students to see which online tools might be good for citizen participation. And if you have a moment, then you will be able to give feedback whether this platform, this platform was used for the first time here in Luxembourg and it would be good to get your feedback. It was the first time in Kielen at least. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everyone from the commune, that we could just come here without much ado. and. Um, I lead a group at university as an external person where we look at processes like this one to see what technologies there are to do processes like this and how do these processes work. Is it easy for people? Can it be rolled out? What are the possibilities here? There was a software used called tasted in, I think it was. What are the limits of it? I've heard, for example, that it might be a bit frustrating with the form because if you have a good idea and the form doesn't have a space to, to write it. So it's those kind of things we want to analyze in the concept 
context of a larger political project where we look at processes like this one, which is very local and very precise, which is the farm. And we want to look at how can we do these projects internationally, for example, in terms of sustainability. The whole planet talks of sustainability, but everyone has their own definition. Every government has their own definition. And uh, Luxembourg has their own say, and the voice of the civil society is missing. So this is about a global context for civil society. And because that's a complex question, we quickly come to the limits of the tools. And we want to look at that in detail. And that's why we're here. And we have, uh, if you have ideas or comments about the process, then we'd be very happy if you came to us and talked with us about it. Whether it was complicated, why did you participate? Is it because you like the fact that you're being asked or because this um, farm is so important to you and we'd like your opinions on the forum and through the things that you tell us we can see how we would test tools or what we have to think about if we test tools and if we compare them thank you So if you want to give your experience to the students, then please um, take this opportunity, and it has a lot of value for you. I just want to look into the next steps. The 6th and the 13th of November, we have the workshops, the first tour, and then the 27th uh, of November, we have the second um, workshop or the third one then end of the year there should be um, a voting on on the projects and then the final decision would fall at the beginning of 2022 the final decision means that there would also be a, uh, the the um, the documents for the tender would be prepared and the technical details. So the commune would go so far that the final decision would be influenced by these groups. The final decision will be made by the commune, right? Yes, that's why between there we have the voting. The final decision would be the communal council. But before, there is a voting of the citizens. But, of the, but the political um, decision takers will have to take the final decision. Good, okay, well don't forget that the platform uh, still exists, participationkeelen.lu, if something new happens you will know it through there. If you're not registered to it, then you, I would really recommend that you do this now, because it's the easiest way to get news about the project. And then from my side, I would like to really thank you for coming tonight and for your participation up to now, and then hopefully for the next phases too.